or coffee. This is, my wife got me a nice big coffee mug, so I'm very grateful for it, especially, especially on working days. So, all right. So let's jump in and see any questions that you guys have. Uh, there's a question here from Mel. Uh, what kind of projects do you normally work on? So I am, um, I'm a web application developer. So, and that's, that's really my preference. I prefer to build applications that work on the web. <laughs> so uh, that's the easiest way of saying it. Um, basically, so you kind of have, you have websites, right? Which would, you know, which would be like devmentordave.com, right? So it's just a, it's just a web page, you know, that tells you about that company or about that organization or that topic or whatever it is, right? Um, you could also include like forums and things like that. That's just a, that's just a website. Even, even things like, you know, Facebook really is really more of a website than an application, but we can argue that. Um, what I, what I actually work on right now are applications, <clears throat> excuse me, applications that people typically use for their company, for their job. So that we would be developing something that would help them, um, with some of their processes. So make sure maybe you have a, a process that you think should be automated or it should be easier for your people to, to work through. Um, you spent, you're wasting a lot of time doing, doing kind of the same things over and over and over again. Um, so I build software really to kind of help with a lot of those types of things. So most of the software that I build, uh, these days is for actual other companies, kind of business to business <laughs> software. Um, but we do build some applications and things like that, that are for, um, for end user, uh, consumers as well. Um, but yeah, so that's most of what I do is application develop. So I do a lot of, you know, building dashboards and, and workflows and, and things like that. So, and that's, that's what we're going to do as a group. We're going to do so, the project that we're going to do is going to be more of an application. It's not going to be a website. Um, early on when I started, I was actually building, um, websites with WordPress. So there's a, there's a poll. If you want to go back and look at it, there's a poll in the community channel where, uh, we have lots of, lots of varying, uh, opinions about <laughs> about WordPress, but if you're not familiar with WordPress, WordPress is a, is a CMS, a content management system, um, for originally for blogging basically, but it's, it's grown much beyond that to where you can add plugins and themes and all kinds of things. Um, and so I used to be a theme developer, theme and plugin developer, uh, for WordPress websites. That was kind of my first, um, real job. I, the, the first thing that I actually did though, was build applications. It's probably why I enjoy applications more than anything. That was really the first thing that I built. Um, so yeah, thanks Eddie. It, it is a big cup. <laughs> so I, I really, I like enjoy, I enjoy building things that, that I know people are going to use and that are going to help them do something better. Right. So I, I want to build something that's going to make somebody else's life easier down the road. You know, there might be a little learning curve, you know, when we're building it. And that's, that's one of the things I like about the company that I work for is that we build custom software. So we build something specifically designed for the people who are going to be using it. Right. So we're a lot of times, you know, people buy these really expensive pieces of software that do, you know, they do one specific thing, something like Salesforce or something like that. That's a, that allows you to, to manage your, your, uh, sales, manage your contacts and things like that. And so, um, but it, it's, even though it's supposed to be flexible, a lot of companies end up having to kind of force the way they do things into how it wants you to work. Well, building custom software lets you kind of work the way that you want to work or work the way that's best for you and your organization. And so that's, that's what I do for a living is I build custom software. I've pretty much done that really since the beginning outside of my first, uh, uh, learning HTML. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all right, Eddie, feel free to, feel free to steal our ideas. Um, it's, it's out here on the internet. So anybody can, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I do web application development and, and it's just the difference between application development, and web app, web application development is this is something that's accessible on the web. So you go to 
you know, devmentordave.com and that's an application uh, versus just a website or versus an application on your computer. Because um, you may be on here, you may be like, you know, I don't necessarily want to build web applications. I want to build something that runs on my computer. Well, that's a kind of a different type of development, but obviously a lot of the stuff, it's a lot of the same stuff carries over uh, from a learning perspective and from a, from a programming perspective. So it's just different languages, different uh, implementation as far as that goes. I don't personally design a lot of UI. Um, you, you don't really want, I'm not a designer. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. You don't want me, I'm not going to make you anything pretty. Um, this is, let me show you this real fast. So, So like this, this stuff is, this is the extent of my design skills, people. Um, this is, and this is a lot of work. This is like hours of work, hoping that it looks okay. <laughs> so all of these, I do do my own, uh, video thumbnails. So, um, you know, if you go back and look at, uh, you know, these things now, I will tell you most of the pictures are from like stock photos. Obviously I don't take, I don't take these pictures, you know, but I, you know, I do like the layovers and, and I, I can do some manipulation of things here and there. Uh, but honestly, you know, I, I do most of, I do all of it, but it's very simple. I'll put it that way. I do it all, but it's very simple. You don't want me designing your website or your web application. <clears throat> um, usually, if, uh, if I'm developing an application, I will use a framework, um, or I'll use a template or something like that. Um, and again, we're going to talk about some of those things in an upcoming video. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here necessarily jumping into details on that. We can maybe in a future live stream as well, if we want to do that on a specific topic. Um, but I find it's, I'm just not that creative of a person. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like the back end probably a little bit more than the front end. I'm just not like super creative and man, I, I can design something that looks really cool. That's not me. So I, I, I use what I see from other people and I use templates and things like that to help me. And I, sometimes I'll mix and match it. Um, and I can look at something and, and say, and know that it doesn't look good, <laughs> but I can't tell you why it doesn't look good. I can just tell you it doesn't look good. Um, yeah, there you go, Eddie. It doesn't have to look nice as long as it works, right? That that actually is very true. Now, if you've got something that uh, that you're trying to sell, you do want it to look nice because the average consumer, you know, eye candy is is a real thing for for a consumer. Um, but especially even in, when you're building business applications, it does not have to be super slick. Um, it just needs, it needs to work well. It needs to do the thing that people want it to do. Excuse me. At the end of the day, that's really from a programming standpoint, that's really what the whole goal is, is to, is to build something that people use and, and that makes their life easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I might have to switch over to water here. Hang on. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I do. I'm, I don't really do UI. Um, Magenta and lime green go well together. I, is that what my colors are? I don't know. I I do like, I like that color. I like that color fade, but <laughs> I don't know what it is. So maybe, maybe those are the right colors. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Hey, Matt. Nice to see you. Let's see. Very new to this. I read that Wix, WordPress, Webflow are bad for your learning because they remove the need to learn code. What are your thoughts? Oddly enough, <laughs> I actually have a video on that. Um, so you can go watch it and I'm not going to answer. No, I'm just kidding. I'll answer you now. It's um, right here. WordPress destroys careers. This is, uh, this is a couple months ago. This is one of my earlier videos. So, you know, the quality may not be as good as, as it currently is, but uh, I would, <sighs> I'm mixed on this because I actually do like WordPress. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Wix necessarily. I've never used Webflow, um, but I've, like I said, I've been a developer, a WordPress developer myself. myself. Um, so I'm a little mixed here because I do have some bias towards 
WordPress. Uh, I do enjoy it for, for the right things. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I would say if you are building basic websites, um, I would use something like WordPress just because it's faster. Um, it's faster to build. And, uh, once, once you learn WordPress though, so that's the, that's part of the caveat you learn WordPress and then you can do things like that faster, but there is a learning curve for WordPress too. Right. So, um, in fact, I, I taught a, a short course for a company a couple of years ago now, um, which was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, um, and then also WordPress. That's a lot of things to squeeze into 14 weeks, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but WordPress, you know, so it's good for what it does. Um, and I typically use it. DevMentorDave.com is a WordPress website. Um, I, I use it to build something very quickly. That's just going to be kind of a website, um, thing. I don't prefer it for building anything more than basic websites. So if you're wanting to add lots of different functionality to it, to me, that's where uh, there's lots of plugins and things that add some cool functionality, but that's where WordPress kind of goes off the rails and it's not really designed for that. Um, it just, it just isn't, it's not what it's for basically. And so I would encourage you to learn it because I think it can be helpful for maybe some quick jobs, building websites for people, but I would not, I would not pursue that necessarily as a career. Um, one of the reasons I wouldn't pursue it as a career is because there's a lot of competition in that, in that world, because it's pretty easy to get into. Um, and so a lot of times you're just going to get undercut if you're trying to make good money doing it. Um, there's a lot of people who will do it for less. Um, and that's nothing against them. That's just a reality of, of the situation. So I just don't see it as a great career builder. Uh, but it is something that, that I'm thankful for that I use. Um, it can hurt you though, uh, to back to your question, it can hurt you because it all is, you know, drag and drop. Like I have a theme that I use called Divi. Everything's drag and drop, manipulate sliders. You know, maybe I'll show it to you one of these days. Um, but it, it's so simple that you don't have to think about necessarily any coding aspects. So you, you really do, if you use it a long time, you really do lose some of your coding, uh, Cops, so to speak. In fact, I actually have, um, a gal that I, that I was in one of my classes. Um, I've, I've interacted with her since several times, uh, dealing with, you know, just offering some mentoring things and some questions that she's had here and there. And she got a job right away working on WordPress. Um, she wasn't doing themed or app or plugin development. She was just work, you know, building websites with WordPress and, she actually told me about a year after she started that she, she felt like she needed to go back and relearn a lot of the stuff, especially the actual programming stuff like JavaScript. Um, but even like some CSS stuff, she needed to go back and relearn that just cause she's not actually using it every day. Now, if you're dealing with WordPress and you're actually building themes from scratch in PHP and HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or if you're building plugins to do some of those things, um, that could be a little bit better, could be a little bit better pay for WordPress work. Um, but a lot of people, when they're, when they're using WordPress, they're just using it to build the sites. Um, and, uh, and they're using, you know, these other plugins to make it easy for them. So they don't have to do that. Uh, but if you, you can actually still keep your, your coding skills up to, up to speed, if you're actually building plugins and themes, um, but if you're not doing that, I wouldn't recommend it as a long-term strategy. Um, I, I would say learn it just to kind of see what it's like, but don't, don't pursue that if you're really looking to be a developer full time. So sorry, that was a really long uh, response. And a lot of that is in that video. I think there's a little bit more in there too. It's a little bit more succinct, maybe even just my ram than just my ramblings here, uh, this morning, but, um, but yeah, go check that out. Uh, it's on, it says, uh, WordPress destroys careers, but here's a simple fix. Um, so that's the, that's the title of it. If you're looking for it, um, let's see. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, Mel, sometimes switching 
languages is helpful, uh, especially if you if you're brand new to learning it. Um, there's just concepts in programming that that can be hard to to grasp, right? I've actually been off and on trying to teach my kids uh, different aspects of programming. Um, we started with some you know basic HTML, CSS, um, and just started JavaScript, and then I jumped them actually over to to PHP, and it is interesting watching them as they're trying to learn, you know, the, excuse me, the different things that they're struggling with, um, just some of the concepts that they're struggling with. So, um, yeah, sometimes maybe moving to a different language, uh, will help with that. Um, even just a different, a different teacher, maybe at times, um, can help explain things a little bit better in a way that you understand a little bit better. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if you're going, if you're actually like going to classes for it, or if you're watching tutorials or how you're learning that, but uh, maybe trying to come at it from a different perspective will help um, with some of that understanding uh, as well. So that might be another option, but yeah, sometimes there's, there are some things in programming that don't necessarily correlate to real life. Uh, there's a lot of things that do, and you can, you can use examples from real life to explain things. Um, but yeah, there are some things that are a little abstract and hard to understand. So I definitely understand, you know, where you're coming from there. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, green and blue. That's what I call it. Green and blue. I don't know if. I guess is magenta. I don't know. I don't know. Is that like a reddish? <laughs> See, see, I'm not the UI person. You do not want me developing your UI stuff. Um, first web page was in magenta with a line border form. Okay, nice. Yeah, Matt, really, that's what it comes down to. If you don't use it, you lose it. Um, and really, that's the thing with with all of development, right? You, The more you use it, the more it just becomes a part of you. Right. I mean, it's the same way with anything that, you, that you're working on. If you're, you know, learning an instrument, you know, I, I have you know, it's in my bag, but I have a guitar here and I've I, you know, have learned to a specific point of guitar and I probably will never go any further than that because I don't spend time trying to learn it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm content with where I am. And so if I don't if I don't keep working at it, I'm never going to get better than I currently am. And it's it's really the same way with with, um, with development. And, and it's almost worse with development because everything changes all the time. It's always constantly changing. It's getting, uh, it's getting different. Now we've got AI tools and, and AI pieces of this whole situation. So thanks mom, pinkish purple. Um, so yeah, but, uh, but yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's the same thing with, with like everything else, it, the more you use it, the better you're going to get at it. Um, and the easier it's going to be, you know, down the road. So absolutely. Uh, what projects would you recommend to help prevent skill decay? That's a good question. I think, I don't think there's like one specific project or group of projects that I would recommend. Um, and this is <clears throat> a video that I'm hopefully going to record this afternoon, maybe uh, for Monday. This comes down to that tension between um, passion and pragmatism, right? So this is a question that I've gotten a lot and that's why I want to do a video on it here. Um, but should I pursue my passion when it comes to development or should I pursue the things that are going to get me a job? <laughs> Basically. Um, I think when it comes to preventing skill decay, that's a great place where passion can come out where it may not be able to come out in other areas of your development career. Um, so if you have something that you specifically want to learn, that's going to help you prevent uh, decay in your skills because you're going to be pursuing learning something. You're going to be working to learn that. Um, so I think that's that really is is the key to it. It's not it's not so much a specific project as it is a specific passion, as it is something that's that's pushing you forward. It's making you want to want to grow and want to learn more and want to keep going. Um, 
the skills thing, a lot of it is just usage. Um, so, but even that, it's not necessarily skills de de decay, but sometimes your skills can get out of date. Um, if you're not keeping up with some of the more recent things, um, for example, I, I am not a react dev. I've used it a little bit. Um, just playing around with it here and there. I actually wrote a little, um, video maker thing application just for fun, uh, with a plug because it was written, the plugin that I had was written in react. And so I learned a little bit of react for that, but it's not, that's not my staple. I don't, I honestly don't really like it, <laughs> but, uh, but we have a project that's, uh, we have several projects actually at work right now that are, that are react. And so I'm actually working on my skills with react to try to understand, you know, understand it better and get better at it, get faster at it. Um, so I think there's lots of, there's lots of like outside things that will help you, uh, prevent decay of your skills that aren't necessarily just like a specific project. I would say if you're looking for a project, think about something that, um, that would be helpful to you. Right. So one of the projects that I'm wanting to work on that we might work on, uh, together, we'll see, um, is a very simple budgeting app. Now there's all kinds of budgeting apps out there, right? So I'm, I'm not looking to build something that, uh, that somebody else is going to buy necessarily. Right. Uh, or that I'm even going to offer to anybody, but I have, I have a specific way that I like to do my budget that, um, that works with the way that I get paid and all, all kinds of things like that. That isn't maybe necessarily the same way that most people want to want to handle their budgets. And so, <clears throat> so I, I've been using one product and it works. Okay. I, but I don't really like the way it works. So I want to build something for myself that's going to work the way that I want it to work. And, and for me, that that's a good way for me then to explore some of these other things. So maybe I'll work on it in react, or maybe I'll, uh, work on it with, uh, with something that's, uh, that's a newer technology that I haven't, that I haven't learned yet. Um, something like that. So that gives me an opportunity to keep my skills from decaying, it gives me something that I'm passionate about. Um, and it also gives me an opportunity to potentially learn some new things along the way too. So, you can kind of get all of those things. If you just look at your own life and see what works better for you. Another thing, um, that my wife has been asking for, for a while, and I still haven't done it. Maybe we'll do this project. Uh, but, uh, she wants a, a family, uh, calendar. Well, there's lots of calendar apps out there, but she wants something that works the way that she wants to do a family calendar. Um, you know, so so there you go. Uh, that's a, some, that's something that I probably should have written a long time ago and I haven't, <laughs> um, but that's a, that's another project, right? So, so just looking at your own life and seeing, you know, what would be helpful, what would be beneficial to you? That's what I would do to keep my skills from decaying, especially if, especially if you're like in a, in a process where you're looking for a job and, uh, and you're a junior developer. So you're not, it, it's just a hard time to get a job right now. Um, and you need something like that to keep your skills up. Um, I would go, I would go in that direction because if you build something that you find beneficial and helpful, there is a good chance that others would find it beneficial and helpful as well. So I know a lot of people really push this idea of, of junior devs, you know, build something real, build something that other people are going to use, build something to sell is kind of the idea. And while I, I understand where they're coming from on that, and, I, and to some degree, I agree with that, not everybody's good at business, <laughs> right? Uh, there's a reason why I'm not in, in business for myself. I'm just not, I don't feel like I'm a good business person. I don't, I don't necessarily have the ability to go out and sell, especially sales, sales stuff. I'm not a salesman. Um, so I'm not going to go out there and, and do a good job of selling an application that I build. Um, so, uh, that's, that's just the thing, you know, with, with that concept that I wouldn't necessarily agree with, but you could still pursue that, right? You could still build something that works for you and then release it out in the world, maybe even charge for it, you know, go through the process of building in, uh, subscriptions for it or something like that, you know, so, or even just a one-time payment to get access to it, whatever. Um, so uh, there's lots of opportunities there, especially if you're not able to get a job right now as a junior developer, 
um, those are some ways to, to keep your skills up to date, but also maybe potentially open up opportunities down the road. So <clears throat> nice, Eddie. Yeah. Productivity app. <clears throat> Laravel is awesome. Um, I actually learned Laravel. For those of you who don't know, Laravel is a backend PHP framework. Um, and I'll mention that when I talk about frameworks here in a couple of weeks in the dev developer odyssey series, but, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I actually learned Laravel several years ago back on version four, I think it was <laughs> it's on version 10 now. Um, but that's what we use. That's kind of the main thing that we use at the company that I work for. And I, I really loved getting back into that ecosystem. There's just a lot of great stuff there. So, uh, yeah, thumbs up on the Laravel for sure. Eddie, uh, let me see if I've missed anything else here. <laughs> yeah, thinking like a programmer. Um that's a good that's a good reality check, right? Yeah, quitting is easy. Um it's easy to say, well, I can't do it. Right? And and you know, I want to be careful because well, I love, I love programming. I think a lot of people can be developers. I think a lot of, a lot, I think a lot more people could do it than, than think they could do it. Um, but the reality is there are some people that just can't, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that you just need to work harder. Right. Um, some people just can't do it. Um, but I think if you have, if you have a passion for it and a desire for it and you've, spent months learning it, you probably can do it. <laughs> you probably can do it. You probably just have some roadblocks here and there. For example, like you said, thinking like a programmer, you know, um, really the key to thinking like a programmer is just problem solving. You know, we spend most of our time actually thinking about how to fix something than we do actually writing the code for it. Now, sometimes we have to go back and rewrite code because we thought about it some more and <laughs> and thought of a better way of doing it. Um, but at the end of the day, really, it's mostly, it's mostly about thinking. It's, it's a, it's a problem solving situation. Excuse me. I think it's one of the reasons why I like application development, because what you're doing is you're solving a problem, right? You're solving a problem for somebody, uh, for a company or for an individual to make it easier for them to do their job, to make it faster for them to do their job. And so part of that is, is understanding their job. Part of that is being able to uh, consolidate what they do and, and try to find better workflows, try to find faster ways of doing it, and then just writing the code to make that happen. So at the end of the day, the writing of the code part, while that's the biggest learning curve, I think um, the most important part of it is learning to think like a programmer, learning to think, okay, how do I, how do I tell this computer to do the things that I want it to do. And, and really what that comes down to is learning, learning how to give instructions. Well, um, if you think about it, and I, I forget if I talked about this on a video recently, I feel like I did. Mm, I don't remember. I think I did somewhat recently talk about this, but, um, really what programming is, is giving a set of instructions to the computer to do something. Um, the more precise your instructions are, the better you're going to be able to get that computer to do what you want it to do. Uh, and I gave the illustration of, you know, making a sandwich. Um, I can, I always tell junior developers, write out the instructions for making a sandwich. And if your instructions are like five to 10 lines long, you're not thinking like a programmer right? Because a programmer knows I've got to give every single detail. I have to think through every single pro step in this process to make sure that everything happens exactly the way that I need it to happen. And then I've got to know how to tell the computer to do that. And that's where the learning, the programming language comes in, but learning to think like a, like a developer really is learning to think, you know, if I'm, if I'm giving instructions to somebody who is extremely literal, they, they don't have the ability to think outside the box. All they can do is follow exactly what I'm saying. Can I give them every piece of instruction to get them from point A to point B without having to go back and 
and rewrite it. That's what we do a lot of times. You know, we we think through the process, we write some code, and then it doesn't work quite right, and then we got quite correctly, and then we have to go back and and look at it and be like, oh, I didn't think about this part of it, so I've got to write instructions for that part of it, right? So that's really what thinking like a programmer is, uh, Eddie. When it comes down to it, it's just it's thinking, it's learning to think through steps, learning to think through what does the computer need to know in order to do things the way that I want it to do them. Cause sometimes you can accidentally get to a place. Um, but that doesn't mean you got there the best way. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, learning to think through all those, all those pieces is the key. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Learning quickly versus learning long-term. That's a good question. Um, I don't know if it's Ali or Ali. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a really, that's a hard one, right? Because we are, we are people of immediacy, right? We want, we want to change and grow quickly. We want uh, results quickly and that just doesn't happen <laughs> in, in most areas of life. That just doesn't happen. But, um, but especially as a developer, especially if you, if you don't have any like background in technology, any background in problem solving for your job, um, or teaching or, you know, things like there are some, there are some skills that's, that translate over pretty well math. If you do a lot of math stuff that translates over pretty well. Um, but yeah, if you don't, if you don't have something that translates well into programming, it's, it is going to be much more difficult to grasp a lot of those concepts and to, and not that you can't, you absolutely can. Um, I would personally say I didn't, I didn't necessarily come from a background that was built for that. Um, technically I, I was driving a car and I was, uh, doing, uh, taking calls in a call center. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I don't, none of those are really problem solving, uh, jobs to, to jumpstart my career in, in web development. Uh, it was more just kind of an interest for me, but, um, but yeah, understand here, here's what I would say. Here's what I would say. Uh, Ollie, Ali, um, celebrate the small victories. Um, when you learn something, e even if it's a small thing, celebrate that, enjoy it. Um, realize that it is a step in the, in the process, because I think one of the problems that we can have as developers is we, we have this good end goal, right? This is where I want to be in six months. And after three months, we don't feel like we're halfway there, even though we're halfway through the time. And so we, we forget all the things that we have learned to that point. And we just see this goal and we feel like we're never going to get there. And, and maybe that six month goal is, should have been an eight month or a 12 month goal. And maybe that's just the reality, but we need to, we need to take the successes and the wins along the way. So I always, I always recommend doing something. Maybe it's writing a program. Maybe it's just putting it, writing a note of what you want to learn as you're learning new things, make other notes of things that you have learned. Uh, if you have a repository, go back and look at some of the commits and the things that you've added to that repository or multiple repositories that you've developed over time. And you can see the progress that you've made. Um, I, the very first application that I did for, for money, <laughs> um, actually, it actually ran for like 10 years. Uh, the organization that had it, um, we built a custom piece of software for them. And they used it for like 10 years uh, and just recently actually moved it into a, a Docker instance and things like that. I'll, I'll explain that sometime, uh, some other time. But, um, but I went back when I was, when I was moving that, that piece of software, I went back and looked at the code and, man, that's bad code. <laughs> that is some, that is some awful code. Uh, when I look at code that was at this point, 15 years old, um, almost 15 years old. And, uh, and so going and looking back at some of the old stuff that you've done and seeing where you are now, I think that really helps kind of quell some of those issues of feeling like you're not going fast enough. 
if you can look back and see the things that you have succeeded at, see the things that you, that you are growing, that you are learning, um, and that you have, that you have learned along the way, you can do things now that you couldn't do six months, nine months, 12 months ago, uh, two years ago, depending on how long you've been learning. Right. So, um, it's really important to, it's really important to look at what you are doing now compared to what you used to do, which could be nothing, you know? And so you definitely want to, you definitely want to look at that and see, remind yourself of the success that you have had. And that will help. It's not going to be a perfect cure, but I found that that is the biggest help when I'm learning something, looking back and seeing those small successes and making note of those successes along the way, or having some way of viewing them, um, helps me see that I'm not wasting my time. Even though this is taking longer than I want it to, I'm not wasting my time. Even, you know, something like YouTube here. Um, I look at a video today compared to my earliest videos. The quality is the video quality is better because I learned some new things. Um, the editing is better. The, the editing is faster. I edit videos faster than I did before. Um, so looking at those different things, you can see, you can see the small successes. Is it, you know, super professional the way that I'd love, you know, if I could pay somebody else to do it? No, it's not, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm working to get there and, and, you know, maybe at some point I'll, you know, get my kids involved in it or something like that and teach them and make them, make them do all the hard work. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that would be my recommendation is don't focus as much on where you're at in getting to your goal. Focus on where you've been. Uh, so, you know, you know that you have been successful, right? So that, that would be the key. Uh, let's see. Any tips on improving problem solving skills? I feel like I know enough to get by with the actual coding, but sometimes it takes a bit to think of a potential solution to a problem. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you mentioned it in your next uh, statement there, Dean. Um, sandwich part, good advice. It doesn't have to be a sandwich, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what, that's what you're probably writing anyways. You're trying to get from point A to point B, you know, so what kind of instructions am I going to give somebody to do this? You know, whatever, whatever the, this is, you know, maybe it's something that you're more interested in, you know, like, you know, replacing the inner tube on a bicycle, <laughs> bicycle wheel, you know, I don't know, write out the steps for that. And, and then go through and be literal, like follow your own steps. So this is, this is where refactoring comes in when it comes to being a developer right? We go back and we refactor our code because we realize, Hey, that code is not very good. Right? So let's say, so you write your steps out for replacing the, the inner tube in a, in a tire. Now go, you've written them out, go and literally only do the things that you specifically wrote out. All right. So if you, if your instructions start with take the, uh, take the tire off of the, of the rim, that's not a good place to start because, well, maybe it is. No, you can't, you can't do it that way. Right. Cause you've got to, you've got to actually take the wheel off the bicycle because the bicycle gets in the way of being able to put something round on something round. Right. So if you go through and literally only follow those steps that you wrote out, what that does is it makes you realize the areas that you miss the first time. Right. So you, you realize the problems that the, the things that you didn't think about. And so that helps you again, think through, I think through things much more, much more quickly and, and, uh, better, more accurately now than I did 15 years ago. Um, and, and part of that's just time, right? It's time you, you, you kind of get through the process over and over and over and over again of knowing I need to think about this and I need to think about that. And I think about this. So, um, I think the best way to, to improve it is to take those instructions and follow them. Um, because you can look at those instructions all day long and be like, those are really good instructions. <laughs> you know, I, back when I was writing, you know, the first iteration of code, I looked at that code and I thought that was, that's really good code. Um, but that doesn't mean it's, it's good code. It could, it could need a lot of refactoring. It could be missing some things that I didn't think about. Um, that's one of the reasons why, um, it's good to learn test driven development. Most, unfortunately, most companies don't give you the time to do that. 
most clients don't give you the time to do that, to add tests to your, to your code. But one of the benefits of, of writing tests for your code is the act of writing a test should force you to think through some of those scenarios that you need to cover in your code. And when you write a test for that scenario, it, it'll fail. <laughs> and so you'll realize, oh, I didn't think through that. But writing the test to determine if your code works is a way of improving your, your initial thought process along the way as well. Um, you're never going to be perfect at problem solving. That's one of the things that I've learned over 15 years. There's going to be things that come up depending on the different scenario, depending on the different uh, client, their, their particular uh, issues that they're dealing with. Um, there's always going to be some, some wrinkle that you just haven't experienced before that you haven't had to deal with before. And so you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn how to think around that, right? You're gonna have to learn how to think through that. Um, so, so I wouldn't be worried about necessarily improving. It's going to improve the more you do it, but I think, you know, following your own, your own, your own instructions, and then also learning how to write some tests, uh, unit tests, um, for like PHP or Java or whatever, um, that's really helpful to kind of force you to think through some of those scenarios. Um, yeah, user stories, um, those can be helpful. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of user stories because they're not they're, most of the time, user stories are not written from a developer perspective. They're written from a user perspective, hence the term user stories, right? They're written from the idea of as a user, I want to be able to do X, right? Um, they can often be more high level than you, than you want them to be for, for problem solving skills. They can be a good starting point though. Um, so I'm not saying don't use them or don't learn it. Um, actually. <clears throat> We'll discuss some of those things as we go through that project, you know, working through the project together, uh, live stream series eventually here this year in 2024, we're, we're going to talk about ticket creation and, and story creation and, uh, what are some of the options there and things like that. So yeah, user stories can be maybe a good starting point. Um, I don't think they're going to, it's going to go that far, but it could be, it could be a good starting point. Uh, Yeah, honestly, um, so the translation between, here's the question he's, he's asking is, um, translating the problem solving to code, right? So when you think about programming there in almost every language, there's the same type of scenarios. You've got variables, you've got, um, loops, you've got functions. I mean, that's really basically it. <laughs> so you're assigning values to variables. You're using those variables in different ways. Um, you are, um, you're going, you're looping through data and manipulating it. You're, um, you're writing functions that do specific things that you use then in those loops sometimes that you use in other places. Um, so maybe, maybe what I would suggest doing is as you're, as you're thinking through the problem, try to envision what parts of those, those programming pieces, you know, what part of this is just a, a variable of just information, right? What part of this is a loop that I'm going to need to, to iterate over and do something with that? What part of this is something that I should pull out as a separate function? Um, because I'm going to need to do that operation multiple times potentially in this code. Um, I haven't actually thought through that a whole lot. That's a good question. I, I will take, I will take that and kind of think, how can we, how can, what's a good way to, to think through applying that to code? Um, I think at some point it just becomes natural, uh, the more you do it, but, uh, but I think it's a good, that's a good question. That's a good topic. How do you, uh, how do you take problem solving and put that into code? Uh, maybe there's some videos out there that somebody's already done that would be helpful. Uh, I might take a look around and see if anybody has some good content on that. And if so, maybe I'll post it in a, in a community post or something like that, or, 
or if I can think of some good answers, I'll, I'll give that to you. But that, that is a, that is a hard question, uh, just off the cuff here, how to do that. But that's the only thing that I can think of is try to try to see what, what of those programming concepts fit well with, with my solutions, right? So my solution for handling and, you know, handling, making a sandwich, right? So I've got a function for, you know, spreading peanut butter, right? And so I'm going to, I'm going to keep spreading peanut butter until, so there's a loop, there's a while loop, right? So I'm going to keep spreading the peanut butter until the whole surface area is full. Now I, I need a, some sort of function to validate if the whole surface area is full of peanut, but you know, I mean, we can get, we can get really detailed into this analogy, but that's, that's really the point of that analogy is to start digging deeper and deeper and deeper in how I think about code. So hopefully that helps. Um, I might see if I can, if I can find some other information on that as well. Um, I'm going to have to wrap up here probably in the next 15 minutes, uh, in order to get over to my son's basketball game. So just FYI, we're going to, we're going to slow this down here. Uh, lots of great questions though. Thanks for jumping on. We've got, um, nine concurrent viewers. That's awesome, man. We've had 28 views so far. That's, that's really cool. This is the best live stream so far, which makes sense because we've told people about people about it for a while, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to shut this down here about 15 minutes at, uh, at, uh, 10, four or 11 40 my time, just FYI. So if I don't get to your question, I will, uh, try to answer it in a video or maybe leave it in a comment on the video later this afternoon or something like that. So I do apologize. Uh, we'll get to questions earlier in the future uh, on these live streams. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it definitely gets easier. Mel, it gets easier as you try more things. Absolutely. Uh, Dimitri, hello. Sorry I missed you earlier. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Learning for two years, feel I'm standing in the middle where I don't know what the program is for me, although I'm good, have a good progress. Yeah, um, Ollie, let me know if it's Ollie or if it's Allie, sorry. I can't tell from the spelling. I'm thinking Allie, but I'm not sure. Um, is programming for you? That That is a hard question. Um, yes, thank you, Dimitri. I, I know we mentioned that earlier. Uh, the Discord link is is incorrect. I'll fix that. Uh, as soon as I get off here, um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, how do I know if it's for me? I think for me, that really comes down to, do you enjoy it? Um, is there something about it that you enjoy? Is there something about it that you enjoy enough that you keep doing it? Um, even if you feel like you're stuck in the middle, and especially for a lot of junior developers right now, when it's difficult to get, uh, to get into that first job, I know a lot of junior developers are having that problem. There's lots of reasons for it. I won't go into right now, but, um, that's a, that's a time when you can really feel stuck. Um, how do you know that it's for you? I think, I think it comes down to do, is there something about writing code that you like and that you want to do? Um, if it's not something that you want to do, it's not something that you're, that you're probably going to get good at, uh, because you're not going to put the time in, you're not going to put the effort in. Um, so that would be my real question. You know, what, what is your motivation for doing it? If your motivation is only, uh, to get a better job, if your motivation is, is only to make more money, um, those are not those are helpful motivations, but they're not long-term motivations. Uh, they're not motivations that are necessarily going to help you grow in your, in your, that are going to help you want to grow your skill set, Right. So, um, but I don't know that you have to love everything, right? I, I don't love everything about programming. Uh, there are some parts of, of writing code that, I, that are extremely annoying. Uh, I just don't, I just don't like them. Um, but they're necessary evils for me to do the things that I do enjoy. Um, and so I would say if you, if there's something about programming that you still enjoy that you, and maybe, maybe it means that you don't do it as a job. Um, 
and that sounds weird to learn programming, but not do it as a, as a job. Maybe it's just something that you enjoy and you learn on the side. Um, you know, my father-in-law actually has talked about learning to write some code. Um, and, and I would encourage him to do that, even though he's retired, he's not looking for a job. Um, I would encourage him to learn, to learn to code because it's, it's good for your, your mind to, to learn something new and, and it can be difficult and challenging. And, um, I, I think it's, I think it's good to learn. It's good to learn to something new. And even if you don't actually translate that into a job, if you enjoy it, it's just like any other hobby, right? So you just figure out what kind of time you can spend on it and enjoy learning the things that you want to learn. Um, but if you're looking for it as a job, you really need, there has to be something about it that you enjoy, even if it's just, you know, enjoying the, um, the ability to build something that people use. Right. Um, to me, that's, that's one of the biggest driving forces of the things that I enjoy, not necessarily writing the code itself per se, but building something that I know somebody's that's going to benefit somebody, right? That's where I, that's where I get a lot of my joy from being a developer from. So um, the code part is kind of the necessary evil there in many ways. Um, although there's things that I like about it too, but, uh, but I would say, what is, what is your desire? What do you enjoy? If, if you're not enjoying it, you feel like it's just a slog, maybe it isn't for you, but if there's something about it that you enjoy, it might be you for a hobby or it could still be for you for, for a job, but just realize that depending on your circumstances, your situation, you know, that the job part of it may look different for you than it looks for other people, uh, may take a different time for you to get into that, that, uh, opportunity compared to other people. Um, there is no one right answer when it comes to how long it should take for you to learn, how long it should take for you to get a job. Uh, there's so many different variables in that, in those questions that it really is up to you whether you're enjoying what you're doing. And I would say if you're still enjoying learning, even if you're not, even if your expectations haven't been met, uh, so far, but you're still enjoying it, I'd keep pursuing it because, um, you never know what's going to open up in the future because of that. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Non-native speakers. That's a great question, Dimitri. Um, I actually have worked with, um, a lot of Indian developers. I have worked with quite a few, um, Spanish speaking developers. And so I've definitely worked with a lot of devs that English is not their, their primary language. Um, there can be a barrier there, obviously, especially here in the United States. Um, really the only thing that I can say is just try your best to learn, to learn how to communicate your struggle, right? That's, that's the biggest problem that I think, especially junior developers who English is not their first language, uh, they, they struggle with is communicating, communicating when something isn't working the way that they want it to and communicating what they have done, what they have tried. Um, that, that is a difficult thing. I don't know that I have a perfect answer for you, unfortunately, Dimitri, other than, um, two things. One, uh, obviously work on, you know, learning English better. Um, although it doesn't have to be perfect. I've worked with a lot of developers that had very broken English, but were great developers. So, uh, so, you know, that, that isn't necessarily a showstopper, but the more English you can learn, the better. Um, it's just going to be easier to communicate. It's going to be easier for, for us lazy Americans, uh, to communicate with you. Um, and that is part of it. Part of it's just that we're lazy. Um, and it's not very fair, but it is a reality, unfortunately. Um, so I would learn that the second thing I was, I would do is maybe try to find companies that are, have people who are bilingual in your, in your native tongue, uh, to help with some of that. Again, I would still pursue English learning English better, but, uh, you know, look for, look for opportunities. You might be able to find on LinkedIn, others who are, uh, from your home country or native speaking, you know, the same language that you speak 
uh, find out how they got involved, where they work, you know, where some of the, the things that they've struggled with, what they've learned, um, probably would be even the better avenue to go as far as, you know, dealing with that. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, especially dealing with Americans, your best bet's going to be just trying to learn English better, um, and focus your English. I would focus your English mostly on explaining your code because at the end of the day, that's, that's the interaction that we're going to have the most is talking about code, talking about issues that you're having struggles you're having with your code. So, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely work on the English side of things, but, uh, I would assume most of your code is written in English. Uh, so that's, that is helpful to some degree, but I, I do, I do feel your pain, both, uh, understanding what you're going through, but also having worked with many people who have dealt with that. Um, and just to be honest, the best way to handle it is to learn is to just get better at, at speaking English. Unfortunately, um, uh, that is going to be a hindrance for you. Unfortunately, it's going to be a, hind a hindrance for interviewing and things like that. Um, yeah, that's tough. I, I'll have to think about that some more and see if I can come up with some better, um, some better options for you there. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I, I think, I think the biggest thing is going to be just learning, learning English better. Uh, Tecna, nice to see you. I didn't, sorry, I didn't see you a little bit earlier there. Hope you're doing well. Been in the workforce for six, seven years now, feeling like skills are stagnant. Tried to do personal projects to renew my skills, but job drains me. How do you combat this? Um, I totally get where you're coming from. <laughs> um, you have to remember that what we do is, is a mental drain. Um, and that's why your personal project, if you have one, um, uh, it can't, it has to be something that you're passionate about. It has to be something that you want or need, uh, in your life. Um, <clears throat> so passion for it is, is one of the biggest drivers. Another thing that I would say is for your, for your personal projects, treat them as if they are real world projects. So you are your client, right? You are your client and you have a deadline and you need that project done by a certain endpoint. So run that project as you would any other project and, but know that it's going to be, it's going to be different, right? It's going to be longer because you're working on it in off hours and be reasonable. Be reasonable in the timeframes that you set for yourself. Be reasonable in what you think you can actually get done. Um, write tickets for it. Uh, don't just, you know, one of, the, one of the worst things you can do working on a personal project is not plan it out. Just kind of work on it as you think of things. That's horrible. Um, we don't do that in our real world, real world job. So why would we do that for a project that we want to do on the side? Um, but do something that you're passionate about, that you want to, to build plan it out, write tickets for it, you know, use the same process you would be reasonable and how long things are going to take. Um, those are the biggest things that I would say. And then maybe I would add in, throw in something, something that you want to learn, right? So if you want to learn a new JavaScript framework, uh, make that part of the process of, of what you're building. Um, so that you're forced to build skills along the way. You're forced to, to learn something, but I think you do have to just be reasonable and understand, Hey, I can't do this every night. You know, maybe it's not going to be twice a week, you know, and if it's only twice a week, what, what can I get done in those two, three hours, a couple times a week, that's reasonable and plan that out. And that way, another thing that that does again, is it gives you progress that you can see. You can see the tickets that you've got done. And it's not just this random project that I keep playing around with. Um, treat it as if it's a real world project. If you, even if you never release it to anybody, nobody else ever sees it. Treat it like it's a real project. Um, I think that's the biggest thing to help you um, continue and grow off the job. Um, if, that's, if that's one of your focuses, which to some degree it has to be. Um, hopefully jobs, you can get a job at some point that gives you some freedom to do that on the job or just has projects that give you the opportunity to do that on the job. But that, that isn't always the case. So unfortunately you do have to do that on your own a lot of times. So, all right. 
I've got about one minute here. I'm going to shut this down. Uh, let's see. Yeah, again, I'll fix the Discord link here. All right. So thank you, everybody, for jumping on here. This has been fun. Like I said, we'll, we'll do this again in February for sure. I'm, I don't know. It's halfway through January, so we probably won't do another one in January. But maybe we can get to two in February. We'll see. But we'll do at least one in February, and I'll, I'll announce it once I have that planned. We'll try again for a Saturday morning. It seems to work pretty well for a lot of you. So um, again, if you don't mind, you know, share the link to this and other videos, like the videos, watch the videos, uh, subscribe to the channel, join the discord after I fix the link uh, below. And, um, and yeah, let's build this community. This is, this is fun. I absolutely love interacting with you guys and just talking through some of these things. Even if I don't have the perfect answer, you know, at the time, um, or ever, <laughs> then it's still, it's still been a joy to, to say hello to you guys and get to know you guys. And I'm looking forward to doing that more here in 2024. So thank you so much. I will see you all again here in a few weeks, hopefully, and definitely on some videos here coming up this week for the developer odyssey series. And then at least one or two, uh, others along the way as well. So thanks again, guys. I will see you all, um, next time.